let's talk about Focus Odin 5. So I was printing normally, right? And then all of a sudden I get an error uh, at the error 4, error 4 on my touch screen, which is basically the thermistor is not functioning properly. And then it overheat and melted the filament on top of my heated bed. You guys can still see the, the melted filament leftovers on my bed. And then it, from that day on, my uh, thermistor didn't work properly. So we are going to fix that. First of all, let me show you a couple things on the screen. The error code shows in here. Right now my error code is gone, but if you go back to the tools, extrusion, you guys can see that I can see minus one zero Celsius and it never heats up. Even though I go up, it never heats up. It stays in there minus one. And there's a problem definitely with my extruder. Let's uh, check it out what's the problem and I will show you step by step how to fix it. And again, your error code will appear on the top right corner. Mine is gone right now, but it appears. First things first is the safety. So unplug the printer, shut, shut it down, unplug the printer, then come to the top and remove the top fat screw faster. I think we will work more on this side, but unplug this one. And there are two more fasteners over there. Unscrew them to remove the cap of the printer, the yellow cap. and the yellow cap comes out. Next, what I'm going to do is to detach the fan too. I'm going to remove the entire extruder assembly because I'm going to change a couple stuff and make sure that which screw is going where, so don't forget that. And the fan is going to be on the loose. So these two fasteners left over here, we are going to remove them. So these are the longest screws. Them out. See the longest ones. And at this point, remove these sockets. Two of them on the top. Okay, and you will have the controller board down. And this thing will come off when you remove the big screws over there. Right now I'm going to go over this circuit. I think it's pretty important to know which one is which so that you guys can assemble it properly. So this socket is a stepper motor socket for the extruder. This one is the filament detection sensor. Over here, this is the fan for the uh, printed object cooling, cooling the PLA. The second one, second connection is the fan for the um, cooling the extruder. This one over here is the thermistor, which is my problematic socket. And this one over here is the heater module. So first I'm going to remove the heater module connection. I'm just gonna unscrew it. There's no orientation on this, so don't worry about it. My problem is with the socket right over here. So when I pull it, it came out, right? In my scenario, this came out while the extruder moving and everything screwed up. The problem is the socket holder is coming out from the socket. The socket holder is coming out from the circuit. It's supposed to stay there. And when it comes out, it causes disconnections. And <laughs> as a result, my prints are failing. So let's do the same for the fans. As you guys can see, the other fan socket connections are also terrible and they come out all three of them come out like why i think the glue that they use didn't work in here this one is pretty solid uh this one i hope it doesn't come okay these two are good these three was the problem so we are going to fix this on my end if you have the thermistor issue i would suggest you to check this one if you have a similar issue or not that is number one priority also, make sure to remember the previous part of this video, which uh, connection is which. We will get back to that when we are connecting it. Okay, use the screwdriver to remove them. I'm going to remove this male-female sockets so that we can solder it. Okay, since we are right here, we will continue detaching stuff because I'm going to change the extruder heater block as well with the thermistor too. 
So let's remove the heat sink. Again, these are long screws. And when you remove the heat sink, filament detection sensor comes with it. It is already attached to here. I think it is glued. I don't know. Yeah, it is kind of glued here. Let's remove that too. Next thing to remove is this entire block, which I will do. Okay, this is your tensioner. Be careful with your tensioner because it's going, it likes to jump. So remove it uh, as you see in the video. The other things are basically coming off like the motor and everything comes off. As you guys can see, we stripped the extruder holder and I uh, put the cable back in like this. Also, before you put the cable, investigate your cable. Look at these teeth if there's any problem or not, because that might be the issue as well. So tuck it, tuck it back and let's move on to focusing on this problem over here. Okay, I'm going to remove the silicone cover, which is easily removed. And this is my heater block. So I'm not sure what exactly happened on my um, thermistor. Either it's this thermistor get bad or it's because of the thermistor connection at the circuit. But I'm more um, focusing on the circuit because of my socket connections are bad. But just in case, I'm also changing this as well. So when you release this set screw, it all releases the extruder and extruder is out. So as you guys can see, this is the heater block. This is the thermistor connection. So thermistor connection comes out from here. This is the head of the thermistor and you guys might see, okay, let's zoom in. As you guys can see the white thermal paste over there. So I detach this. If you unscrew these two holes, you will be able to detach the heater block too. And the nozzle is in here. As you guys can see, my entire filament melted there on it, right? And that's all the assembly and I'm going to use a new one to solve the problem once and for all I guess. Here is our new one. Let's take it out. Ta-da! So how to attach it? I'm going to bend the cables a little bit like that. Don't push too much and connect it back on like this and it will fit in when you do that whenever it fits in hold it in there and fasten the set screw make sure it is parallel and everything is fastened and fasten this properly so that it doesn't get loose when you're printing okay now i'm going to reattach it with the motor to the top this is the motor section we are going to take the motor put it like this and let it fit in. I keep everything on my magnetic plate so everything is in there so I don't miss it. And we are gonna get these screws, the third longest screw from the top. And we are gonna attach them and fasten them in. So we will use two of them and adjust it. Now we can fasten all the way in these two fasteners. Now back to the tensioner, we will attach it back. As you guys can see, we will just put them together like this, put it in a way that everything is gonna fit and boom. Let me zoom in, you can see the attachment. Right at this point, I'm going to put my silicone um, cover too. One thing to point out for the silicone cover, there's a pocket here. So let your thermistor cables uh, be coming out of that pocket. Next up, we will get back our heat sink and put it on like this. And we will get the second longest screw and put them from the corners like this and fasten them. Another thing to finalize here is the 
attachment of the fan orientation is going to be like this and we will attach it from the corners with the third longest screws and fasten them don't push them too much you may break the plastic of the fan but make sure the cable of the fan is coming from this way okay okay for this matter solution is simple what we are going to do is remove these pins and install the high co higher quality socket so that they won't come out and the other option if you guys don't have sockets don't have soldering machine don't you know if you don't know how to solder you can put these back by putting hot glue gun under it and i believe there are other tutorials or uh, tips and tricks to put them back but uh, the safest is to basically replace them back so what i'm going to do now is open my open my soldering machine and desolder the pins and solder the new solder the new um, sockets so first of all i'm going to stabilize my circuit i have these alligators so i'm going to attach them now my soldering iron will heat up and i will remove these three pins from there for that i will be using solder pump to remove stuff first things first let's start from this one that one is open there we go yeah the focus is i'm losing the focus time to time because of the <coughs> solder gun and the pump but let's see if i can make it better for you so so as you guys can see i remove all the solders from these holes now we are going to put the new sockets and solder them back in okay now i'm going to get these sockets and plug them in the orientation the orientation is important it's going to come in like this okay the opening slot looks that way so i'm going to plug them in like this and solder them in there and put it in easy peasy this one is done now i'm going to open my fume extractor and continue for the two other sockets now our soldering is completed i'm just going to remove my circuit i shut down everything for cooling and let's remove this from the way okay so the soldering is done as you guys can see the circuit looks like this now i made a little bit bending i made a little bit um angle on this one but that's all right as long as the connection is safe i don't see a problem and make sure that your solders are good too so they're not cold solders right okay now we are going to put this one back and connect everything and see if everything is going to work okay let's remember the connections that we are going to do so this one will be connecting the um, extruder heater the ceramic heater connectors which is why I'm trying to put two of them together at the same time just I can do it one by one and this one is done Second one is into fastened and make sure that they're not going to come out. Perfect. Now, this baby is a thermistor and thermistor connection, remember, will come in this one. And it fits right in there. Okay, the second one is the extruder cooler connection. So, we are going to connect it. 
The orientation of these sockets are already predefined, so there is only one way to connect it. Don't worry about making a mistake. And the last but not least, we will be connecting the cooler fan for the printed object, printed filament. So these are all connected. Now I'm going to align the circuit back to its location like this and connect the two other cables that are left over at the top the motor and the filament detector cables and now i will insert this piece as you guys can see like that and i'm going to pack the cables around here so that this object is going to protect the cables from falling down and they will be located right under the motor and push everything in that should be it and then we will get our longest fasteners and put them from the other side i will move my camera in a bit perfect now Fasten this one and second this one. Good? Yes. These two are done. Okay, while the extruder is in this position before I close the cover, let me connect the connector like that and run the printer to see if it if the thermistor is going to respond properly or not. So I just plugged it in and powered it up. Let's see the screen. Okay, so let's click the tool. Let's click the preheat. And yes, we have the extruder back over there. And let's just test it to go to 210, 200. Let's make sure nothing smokes, everything is pretty fine and working. Yep, extrusion is heating up, nothing smokes, everything seems pretty fine. And the cooler fan over here is already working. This one is not going to work until we print something. Okay, now it's reaching the 200. It says 201, 202, it should go down around now. Yep, it's going down. 200, 200. Okay, perfect. It is back in the game. Now I'm going to click close to cool it down. Everything is going to cool down and we will install the cover and basically we will be back in action printing. Okay, since everything is assembled, I'm going to shut down the printer. Everything is cooled down. I'm going to shut down the printer and remove the socket connection over here and put the cover back on and fasten it. Perfect, now I'm going to power it on, insert my filament. And I'm going to do re-leveling of the bed and clean it a little bit since I detached everything. I have to do a re-leveling and then I will start a print. And now Fuku's Odin 5 F3 is back in action. It, it is 3D printing as good as it was before. I like it and this is fixed. I hope you guys uh, made it till the end and solved your problem. And I hope you guys find this video very useful too. If so, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and share it with your friends. So. If anyone is having the similar problem with Focus Odin 5 F3, here is your solution. And I will see you guys in the next video, hopefully, and have a good day.